Hello, welcome to the MeetRx Success Story Podcast. I'm Tracy, your host. I'm here today with another success story. Our friend Stephanie is here. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. Thank you for coming to share your story with us. Thank you. Hello. Yes, I'm so excited to hear it. Can you begin by telling me what was your diet like and your health conditions prior to coming to a meat-based diet? Sure. Um, I would say that it was a typical standard American diet. So um, lots of trips for fast food. I've never been a fan of cooking personally. So lots of anything that can be frozen, microwaved, um, mostly packaged, prepared food was a lot of it. And I have a huge sweet tooth. So anything like cookies or ice cream or that kind of thing on repeat was my typical diet beforehand. And so as, as so many people are, they struggle with the same things. Weight was a really big one, but inflammation was the real problem that created ish, issues for me. Um, I had really bad swelling in my ankles and pain in my knees and my lower back. And to a point where, um, I could not lay down in bed and be comfortable. Every position hurt and I could just cry myself to sleep because I was so tired of being in pain. And then I'd wake up in the morning and the swelling in my ankles would be so terrible that the first couple of steps out of bed, I was just hobbling and it, I was in pain for a few minutes until everything sort of loosened up. And I was only, I was 33 when I, 34 when I started. And I just felt like no, nobody at 33 years of age age should be feeling this much pain just walking around and trying to do life so those were the biggest things for me at the time wow that sounds like a lot to have to deal with like you said at a young age too yeah so how did you um, learn about the carnivore diet or did you try something prior to coming to carnivore as you were going on your journey yeah. I did actually carnivore was an, a complete accident and I'm so happy that I found it. Um, I started doing a keto diet and a couple of years ago I had done keto as well and had really good success with it during one of my pregnancies. And, um, the, so that's where I started when I started with this and what I found after about three weeks in of being back on uh, keto that was all of a sudden meals that I was starting to cook were making me feel nauseous. And, um, I am a single mom. I'm not working. So when I spend my food budget, the food budget money is gone. And so all of a sudden I had these slow cooker meals that were making me want to throw up and I couldn't figure out why. And so all I had left to eat was meat and eggs and cheese, basically things that hadn't been put into a meal already. And I was like, well, I guess for the rest of the week, I'm just going to eat what I have. So all I had were those ingredients. And um, all of a sudden I was hungry. I wanted to eat. Uh, I wasn't having any issues with being nauseous. And so I did some reading and I did find out that what I probably was experiencing was um, some food sensitivity to nightshades because everything that I was making had tomatoes and peppers in it. And so then I did a little bit more research thinking, well, I can't live off of just meat. I'll get scurvy. <laughs> And so um, I found on Instagram, a huge carnivore community of people who have been doing it for years and they had just a wealth of knowledge and experience. And so I just started consuming Instagram accounts and following people who had done it before. And all of a sudden, like it was a night and day difference, the switch from keto to carnivore from even a uh, standard American diet to keto, all of a sudden, I was full. Um, I was not, I wasn't thinking about food all of the time. Whereas even on keto, it was like, well, what do I have to cook for lunch? And what do I have to cook for dinner? And, um, oh, I wish I could have this snack or, and as soon as I switched to carnivore, I was just not thinking about food. Not only was I not hungry, I just, it didn't consume my mind. And so I, that as soon as I started carnivore, I just had a lot of success. Wow, that sounds really interesting. So your keto, when you know, there's a lot of different versions of that. Did you do macros and did you do fat bombs, all those kinds of things? 
Um, the first time I did keto, I did do a lot of fat bombs, but I, with starting back into it, um, I, I did find um, that a lot of people in the keto community seem to be moving away from too high fat and moving towards more um, using fat like a lever and protein was your main goal. And so I do think that I started a very um, a clean keto, I would say like it was not a dirty keto. I did not do um, a lot of sweeteners. I did not do um, I wasn't eating things like quest protein bars or protein shakes or anything like that. It was all healthy, you know, but lots, still lots of vegetables. Every meal had a side or was cooked in a base of something. So I'd say that it was a clean keto. It just was not, I don't know. I, uh, I like to say that from the time I was a kid, I used to always say I didn't like my vegetables. And I always just thought that I was being kind of like a naughty kid, you know, like no, no kids like to eat their vegetables. And once I found out that tomatoes and peppers actually upset my stomach and that vegetables were actually causing me a problem, I was like, oh, I was always right. Even as a kid, I could tell that, you know, certain things were upsetting my stomach, even though they were considered healthy. So I don't know. Keto was great. And I would still suggest it as a good starting place for people. But my success came from switching to carnivore. Oh, awesome. yeah. So did you have any transitional issues when you went from keto to carnivore or even to from the standard American to keto? Did oh, you have sorry, I think I'm losing your connection here. I can still hear you, but okay, oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> so did you have any transitional issues from going from the standard American to keto or from keto to carnivore? Um, from standard to keto, yes, I did. Um, there was definitely, I, I think the biggest thing was just cravings. Like I just really was craving things. Um, I really wanted to keep eating the way that I had been eating. Um, people call it the keto flu. I definitely felt um, sluggish and low for a little bit, but um, it didn't last very long. Like my body seemed to transition pretty easily. And then the switch from keto to carnivore was the most beautiful thing. Like it was, it was just, I instantly, like within a day, I felt better. It was, it was amazing night and day difference to me. So nothing bad. <laughs> nothing bad. That's good. That's good to hear. Yeah. That sounds really good. So would you go over each thing that you had, you know, your conditions, your health conditions, and tell me what happened as you did your keto and carnivore? Sure, sure. So um, the most visible thing that happened was I did lose 85 pounds and I lost that 85 pounds in the first eight months. So it was rapid and it was easy. Like I almost felt guilty seeing other people in workout groups and things that I was part of working so hard and not having positive experiences. Sorry, my dog's barking at someone out there. Go oh, stop, stop. One second. <laughs> Sorry, I'm back. <laughs> I had to take away his window. Keep barking. Um, uh, so the most visible thing that I experienced was the weight that dropped off really quickly. But the thing um, that I was most excited about was the inflammation. So the pain in my knees and my ankles and my back, they went away right away. Like it didn't take months of healing. It took, I mean, maybe a week or two on carnivore and then everything was just right back to the way that it's supposed to be. Um, and I had surprise benefits, which are the things that I, like I didn't have major health concerns before, but I also didn't realize how much my body had been struggling until I switched to carnivore. And those biggest things that helped me were my mood. Um, I'm a single mom. I had just gone, not just, I'd say I'd been divorced for maybe a year at that point. And I just felt I never had any energy to play with my kids. I didn't want to take them to go do fun things. I just felt overwhelmed. My house was a disaster all the time. And all of a sudden I woke up happy. I woke up with energy 
I, w I started cleaning my house. I just thought that I was not lazy, but I was just a messy person. But a lot of it just had to do with my mental health and where my head was at. And as soon as my head cleared up and I started waking up happy, I started doing really well in schoolwork. My house was getting cleaner. I was having fun with my kids. And so those are the things I didn't do it for that, but I'm actually the most grateful for those changes that happened. So. Yes, that's amazing. And, and your weight loss, even by itself, that that's incredible. Yeah, I'm very grateful. <laughs> yeah. And so you did find out about nightshades and that, that's like peppers and tomatoes and what other types of foods are nightshades? Do you know? Um, there are a couple of others, but they're not super common in Canada. So they weren't things that I was eating, but I ate like I, of course I enjoyed tomatoes and I enjoyed peppers, right? Like they're a higher sugar <laughs> carb count vegetable. And so I had them in everything. And as soon as I cut those out, I it was a really, well, that's what led me to carnivore. I just stumbled on it accidentally. And then I had to research to make sure I wasn't going to get sick <laughs> from just eating meat. So yeah. So have you influenced anyone else with carnivore, your family or? Um, I think that people have been shocked when I tell them. Um, and most people, they kind of just leave it there. Like, it's like, oh, well, that's working for you. Interesting. Because they can't, um, they can't argue me on my experience, right? Like my experience really speaks for itself. I would say, I think the funniest response has been um, from my brother who has always been a very healthy person. He's never needed to diet or, or anything like that. And um, I remember him just being like, you eat steak every day and you're healthy and you lost weight. I am never gonna listen to a person talking to me about eating spinach and kale ever again. <laughs> and it was, it was funny to hear because it's like, no, I don't eat, like I used to hate salads. I know people love them, but I never did. And now I don't have to feel guilty about not eating them. Um, I would say that I probably have more influence on Instagram than I do with the people in my real life. Um, because in person, I do take a very, um, general approach of do what works for you, but this is what's worked for me. So if you're experiencing some of these symptoms, well, I used to too. So, you know, it's something to think about, but I kind of, you know, leave it there. But on Instagram, I'm very open. This is how I'm doing it. This is what's working for me. And so I hope that I've influenced people there more so. Yeah, it's a great community. It really is it's so helpful to see so what other people are, are eating and yeah steaks well, and there's just, there are people who it's their career their doctors or their nutritionists and they do they do the in-depth studies that give me the answers that I'm looking for so that I can feel confident in how I'm eating because I don't have the time to do those types of, you know, research or studies or whatever. So if I can buy a book from someone or follow their, their podcast and learn from them that way, it is, it's so educational without me having to put the time into figuring it all out myself. Right. Oh, that's so true. So have you incorporated any exercise with your diet yeah. and lifestyle? I have. Yeah. I, but I've, I've always enjoyed exercise for me. Like I've been heavy my whole life since puberty. Um, but I always enjoyed sports and I always enjoyed working out. So working out was the easy part for me. Cause I actually liked that. So what I started doing was beach body workouts just from home. Um, I did start this right when, uh, the coronavirus was, big and everything got shut down. So it was perfect to have something at home that I could do. And I would say, um, on average, I do four or five workouts a day from home. And then I also like to do a lot of cycling. So I do, um, bike riding when I can get outside, that kind of thing. And I, I really enjoy them. And I would say easily my workouts are far better than they ever have been before because I feel so good. I have so much energy and yeah, they're, they've improved. I've noticed. Wow. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. So because carnivore just makes you feel good and it does. And, and it's mind blowing to me, mind blowing that I can lose weight and gain muscle at the same time. Like that was, that's never been 
something I thought that was even possible. I thought you were either like, of course, you're going to get a little bit stronger while you're exercising, but usually the goal was to lose weight. So you were doing things to lose weight. Well, now my goal is to put on as much muscle as I can. And I'm actually growing muscle, which is also burning fat. Like, it's amazing to me that you can do both at the same time. Yes, it's incredible. I, I was just eating meat, even without working out, just eating yep. meat makes you grow muscle. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, uh, yeah, people do things the hard way, don't they? Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, right. Well, Stephanie, it's so nice to hear your story because you've had great success and I know it'll inspire others. I, I thank you for coming to share your success with us. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. I'm flattered. <laughs> oh, sure, definitely. And um, you have the rest of your evening to enjoy and I will be seeing you around the street, actually. <laughs> what was that? I'm going to go have a steak, actually. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. You got a steak waiting. That sounds good. Yeah. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah, thank you. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.